pulpits to cockpit and often back again in the same day, the man whose dog collar is sewn into his Nomex overalls, Barry Whitehead. Motorsport and God, does it sit well together? If you want a theological explanation, I would argue that all the world is the concern of God, and therefore, presumably, that must form mo include motorsport. But that's not why I got into it. I mean, I got into it because, I don't know, like everybody else, I suppose, at the age of eight, I was taking the, my father's lawnmower apart. Uh, I got a motorbike. Then I began marshalling, but also helping a friend of mine who had a, a one and a half PVT Aston. Um, and I marshalled and mechanic, well, mechanic is a, a, a posh word, turned up with him all through the 60s. And the back end of the 60s and 68, he asked me, would I like to go in the Aston? I mean, I'd, I'd gone to hill climbs with him, I'd gone to sprints with him, I'd gone to races, I used to get to Silverstone and Alton and those. And he said, did I want to enter the Members' Day, because I was an associate member of the AOMOC, I can't afford to be it now. But uh, I went to Wiscombe. And I enjoyed myself. And he said, didn't I want to then have a go later in the year? I drove at Barbon in the Aston. He never asked me again. But by then I had a competition license. What do you do with it? I had a road car. <laughs> and in those days, there were classes for absolutely bog standard road cars. OK, so I put a decent cam in it and b bigger carburettors and that sort of stuff. It was a BMC 1100 Estate. Not a clever car. Uh, I enjoyed it. I had more fun with that car a year and a half. Then I started building my own. And of course, you're sitting in one of your own oh, now. Oh, yes. Is it, does it give you great pleasure to have always built your own cars? It's a love-hate relationship. When I, look at the, when I look at it on the scales and see the weight of it, I think, why, why on earth am I so stupid as to try and build my own? All my cars are engineered like, like blacksmiths or plumbers work. <laughs> but it's, um, yes, I'm, yeah, OK. I, I would never want to buy a car. Gives you great satisfaction to actually put the nuts and bolts together. And oh, yes. Did you do all the engine tuning yourself and so on? No, I, I unbelt and rebuilt engines up. I, I'm, I'm not an engine builder in that sense. I mean, I'll, I will strip them, I'll put them together again, but there's, but, but there's nothing skilled in the way I do it. I do it like most people do, you know. Most people would associate uh, a vicar with doing weekend work. Does it, does it conflict with your racing? Well, when I started, I was a full-time industrial chaplain, spent my time in the factories, which meant that m weekdays, uh, morning, afternoons, and sometimes even night shifts I used to go in, were, the, were always the, the time when most things happened. I had a number of evening meetings, but not many. But weekends tended to be free. OK, so I took services, like any, any clergy uh, who aren't attached to a church do, on a Sunday morning. But I tended to have all Saturday free, and most of Sunday. Now, your daughter's here today, mm. sharing the drive with mm. you. Does yep. that give you great pleasure to see oh, two generations? <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, it's, it's a great joy when your children join you in your game. It's wonderful. Now, this is your chance to tell me how good she really is, without her hearing. What do you mean, without her hearing? That thing's stuck in the front there. Um, this is her second season. Um, she's learning... She's learnt now to put the foot down. She's learned to get off the line decently, better than me sometimes. Uh, and she's now learning what to do on corners. She, she, she's, now I gave her, when she started, I gave her three seasons to, to come up to my times. Uh, my times aren't very good. I mean, for instance, here, I always lift and sometimes even dab the brakes on that top right-hander. And I shouldn't. That's when my times disappear. I'm a coward, basically. <laughs> an old man, you see. It's my privilege as an old man. <laughs> We're keeping your motorsports head on for a second here. How would you like to see extra promotion for things like hills and sprints? Because there's you need to always bring in the young people to do it. I think it's hard to start, now, harder to start, because there's not so much opportunity. I may be wrong on that. The class structure, I'm not sure it's as kind as it was back in the late 60s. Do you miss those days, back in the late 60s? Or is club motorsport still very, very similar now? <laughs> oh, it's very similar. I mean, I mean the, peop uh, the people are similar. I mean, I've been in this class, the, the 1100 single-seaters, since 72. No, 73. My first car was technically a two-seater. It was an autocross special, which I never want to cross, but there we are. It looked horrible. I'd ignore that one. Um, but I've been in this class since 72 or 73, at the 1100 single-seaters. But it's, it's the same class, the same sort of people, the same approach, you know. And I mean, the odd thing with our game, and maybe it is in other forms of motorsport too, though people who go circuiting say it's much less common. Uh, I mean, if I, if I had an engine problem, um, half, my, all my, half my fellow competitors in the same class would do what they could to, to get it, you know, to, to get it right. 
and people will lend you anything. It's mm. wonderful. It's an enormous sense. There's, there's no cutthroat. In that. Whether it is with the big boys, I, I don't think so either. But in our game, no. We share everything. It's wonderful. <laughs>